My name's Carrie Hope Fletcher and you are watching Broadway World UK. First of all, let's jump straight in with your album. Yeah. Talk Ugh. us about that. Yeah, we were we were number one for a little while on the on the pre-order charts, which was crazy. Absolutely crazy. But yeah, I got an album coming out on the 30th of March. Um, and it was so bizarre because from the moment that we like had the first meeting about doing an album to when it was finished was something ridiculous like 57 days. We, we just sort of put our minds to it and we were like, right, we're doing it, so let's do it. Let's get it done. Um, and got it done, we did. And now there's an album coming out. <laughs> so the songs on the album, are they all kind of a homage to your musical theatre past? There's, there's a little bit of everything in there. Um, every song has a, a sentimental significance for me. Um, like there's a song called Summertime on there, which was, I always refer to it as the song that started it all because it's the first song I ever learned. Um, like, from when I was able to talk, I was singing. Um, and so my dad taught me that song. And even now, um, when we're at like Fletcher family parties, it takes about 10 minutes before the guitars are in someone's hands. And I'll always hear my dad play like the opening chords. Um, and he'll just be looking at me, hopefully, from across the room, waiting for me to start singing it. Um, so I got my dad to come and play on the album because it's, you know, it's, I feel like it's our song. Um, but every song, every song has a, a significance to, to me and sort of my musical theatre past or my musical theatre future. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so is everyone in your family able to sing or play an instrument or have a weird talent? Um, uh, my, my dad especially, he, um, he's an amazing guitarist and he used to be in uh, a, a band that used to just play around like pubs and clubs and like YMCA's and whatnot uh, when my brother was younger but it had kind of all stopped by the time I was born. Um, but he's such an amazing guitarist, he's always had a guitar in the cupboard that he'll just sort of disappear off into the house and start playing at some point. Um, and of course my brother's insanely talented and my mum can sing, I've heard her sing in the car, um, but she's so adverse to like any attention whatsoever. I always say that if she went missing, we have nothing to show the police because she won't let us take pictures of her. So. <laughs> So at your, so your Christmas party, is there like a bit of competition? Because you are also talented, you have to bust out some weird tricks. <laughs> no, I think we're all just very happy that we're all sort of in the same, um, uh, like we're in the same family as in last name, but we're also in the same family of uh, industry as well. Um, so I think we all kind of enjoy that we all get it and we can all have conversations about things that we love, things that, that annoy us within the industry and we'll all understand and we'll all completely be on the same wavelength, which I think is very rare for a family to have. So you said the album kind of went from meetings to happening, was it 57? <laughs> Something like 57 days, like 60 days, so yeah. It was a really busy couple of months because you Crazy. just got back from Adam's family yeah. straight into Christmas or yep. Live, into album. I landed at 5am uh, from Singapore doing Adam, Adam's Family and was in rehearsals at 10am the same day for Christmas Horus. Like my brain was like leaking out my ears that day. I was like, oh man, I'm not going to survive. It's just epitome of booked and blessed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Happy to be in work. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're going back into the tour of War of the World. I am, so yeah. Theatre future. Tell us yes. a bit more about the show. Oh, I, it's such an incredible show. I did the uh, the tour in 2014 um, and was just very honoured to be asked back um, this year. Um, and I got to meet all the cast for the first time the other day. We did a little press junket um, and we've got Nathan James, uh, Jason Donovan, who's playing my husband. He's such a dream. Um, Adam Garcia, Newton Faulkner. It, it's a crazy cast, like just some incredible people. Um, and I, yeah, I can't, it was it's one of the most bizarre and brilliant jobs I've ever done because it's over within the, within the blink of an eye it's like three weeks of touring and then it's gone and it's so weird um, I just can't wait to get get back to it again that's some crazy album mega about Jason Donovan who just talked about some weird <laughs> I know. pop party I know I can't wait just there. that tour bus is going to be a rave <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're quite a multifaceted performer um, oh thank you very much I'm <laughs> um, so not only do you sing, dance and act, you're a blogger, a blogger, a yeah. content creator. Do you sleep much? Do you not no, sleep? No, I never sleep and I have so, no social life. That's what I always tell people. Um, I, I just love it all so much that I feel like once I've finished work for the day, I then take the work home with me because I just enjoy it. And when I have time off, I because I enjoy everything so much, I fill that time off with more work because it doesn't feel like work and I just you know if I've got 10 minutes to spare I'll film a video or I'll write a blog or I'll you know because I just love it all so much that I I never really want to stop working. The performance industry is 
quite saturated now with performance, which is fantastic, mm. but however that obviously dilutes the work. Of course. Do you feel as performers it's better to almost have a side passion or a side career? Yeah, well I, I, just for your own sanity I think, because you, you know when you're in shows you're given someone else's words to say and you're singing someone else's lyrics and someone else's songs and you're told where to stand and you're told what to say and you're told what to wear, that it's nice to then come home and do something that's completely for you. And I think even you know from uh, outside of career and income and financial stuff, it's just something you know because everyone who's in the acting industry I, I found is always usually very creative um, so just for your own sanity and your own sort of peace of mind it's nice to come home and know that you have something that's entirely yours your album has got a similar title to one of your books yes, as well exactly the same it's, title yeah is there a link at all um, it's it's mainly because the book is about um, it's about a theatre that's set in the heart of London's West End um, and it's all about uh, being an actor and um, sort of showmances and things that go on behind the scenes uh, and there's sort of a ghost story mixed in there as well um, and it, it you know I put a lot of myself into that book and a lot of my own experiences within the musical theatre industry and, and my career within that book um, that it felt like the link it, it, the link is, is is me really not to sound too self-indulgent or self-obsessive but um, it just felt like doing a, an album that was full of musical theatre songs that are so dear to my heart and then writing a book that's also about musical theatre and reflective of of um, the industry that I'm, I'm so much a part of. It, if, it would have been weird to give them different titles and to not link them in some way. So do you have any advice for not only performers but someone who maybe wants to go into you? YouTube or being an author is it kind of this fingers in all the pies networking have you got any tips or tricks um, I've always I've always said be cheeky like don't be afraid to go up to someone who you feel might be influential or someone who you feel um, just might be on the same wavelength as you or someone who might be able to give you advice don't be afraid to go up to them and say hi this is this is who I am this is what I am doing right now and this is what I would love to do do you have any advice for me or is there someone who you could uh, like give me an email address for or you know it's always worth it because someone might you know turn around and be like no but there might be one person who turns around and goes of course of course here's my number here's an email address and that could be your foot in the door to what you want to do for the rest of your career so be cheeky that's what I've always said I like that mm. um, so predict it or like your future can you say is there anything else in the pipelines after the tour are you allowed to say you're not allowed to say <laughs> some time off um, uh, I mean I always plan to have time off and it never quite goes according to plan which I'm very grateful for of course um, but I'm kind of just seeing what what happens. Um, I, I'm always, I always say to people, take opportunities as they come. Like, never really turn anything down because you never know where it's going to lead. Even if it might not be exactly what you want to do right now, it might turn into something that you want to do for the rest of your life. So it's always worth exploring those avenues and those opportunities and walking through those doors when they do open. Um, so who knows? Who knows? I've got a couple of things in the pipeline, but nothing that I'm allowed to divulge as of yet. But so you are obviously super busy. Is there something you particularly like to do or to get, kind of get away from? I'm, I'm a big foodie. I love food and I love coffee. Um, and so I always sort of find little coffee shops, like little um, like boutique ones that don't, you know, they're not part of a chain, just sort of independent ones I love finding. And um, restaurants as well. Like when I was on Adam's Family Tour, I don't think I've ever eaten so much or had so much coffee in my life because I used to just go on TripAdvisor and find the best places to go, um, which is also something I'm, I'm incorporating into my, into my blog because I love touring so much and I love traveling and seeing different theatres around the country and different cities and we explored so much of um, what the UK had to offer that I'd love to incorporate that into my blog because I don't think there's anywhere for actors to go online to find you know the coffee shop that's closest to the theatre or you know the best restaurant where you can get the best burger or the best fish and chips or whatever around like around the area that you're performing in. I've kind of had an abundance of things since I last wrote anything on a blog like three or four years ago um, and I feel like I'm, I enjoy being behind the scenes. I've sort of missed that not being in front of the camera and not being on the stage and um, being able to just sort of, not anonymously because people know that it's me, but just have a little bit of detachment from putting something creative out there. Um, and I felt like the blog was uh, the best place to do that. It feels like less of a, of a performance, which I had a bit of a lack of in my life. Because even with YouTube videos, you know, whilst I was still being myself, it still a persona or sort of an exaggerated version of me on a camera and I was still sort of having to switch on and 
be someone whereas blogging it's just you know me in my pyjamas sat in my bed <laughs> which is lovely yeah you can just kind of do it at your own time back yeah. to it where you almost need to be sure ready to go on the camera exactly yeah anyway. so it's nice to have something that wasn't so um performative yeah well, last question upcoming concert tell us yeah. where that is where we can get tickets and all about it so it's on the 31st of march and the 1st of april it's four shows over two days and um, there's still some tickets left for the first of april i'm looking at my my team over there first of april yes is the one there's tickets left for um you can go to uh, when the curtain falls dot co.uk i'm terrible at this when the curtain falls dot co.uk uh, to get tickets and there's lots of information about the album on there as well the album is out on the 30th of march oh my god it'll be fine it'll be great terrified <laughs>